welcome to Web of Stories. My name is Melinda. Uh, recently, I got a call out. Thank you very much from Kelly at Books I'm Not Reading. Um, I always appreciate call outs, but she mentioned that I had not done the booktube newbie, quote, newbie tag yet. So um, I thought I had, honestly, but I went into my videos and it wasn't there. And what I think happened was I think I took the tag and maybe adapted it and kind of did it in my first intro video. However, I'm pretty sure since that was my first video that that video is crap. So <laughs> I'm happy to do, after being on BookTube for five months, doing the BookTube newbie tag. We're gonna do that today for Tag Tuesday. So thank you, Kelly, for letting me know I should be doing this. Um, I have no clue who started this tag. <laughs> so whoever started this tag, thank you. And it does not ask me to tag anybody, so don't worry, I'm not gonna tag you. Um, First question, there are 11 questions. The first question is, why did you start this channel? So it was actually kind of an evolution. I started book blogging over a decade ago and I got very much into the book blogging thing where people were sending me books to review and I posted and it got to be too much. So I stepped away from that um, because I just wanted to read what I wanted to read. And um, then I got a bit into to Instagram and I do, I'm still on Instagram. All my my social stuff is down in the description box so you can find it my Instagram is still there um, I just don't find Instagram to be especially now I don't uh, find Instagram to be especially user-friendly um, they made a big change like a year or so ago where it just is really hard to keep track of who you follow and see the video and see the the pictures you want because now there's all these videos so Instagram kind of started working against itself although I am still there um, and I was a little frustrated with where to go from there. Um, I do still do have a blog, but I only do a weekly update where I kind of put my reviews in. Um, it's more, and that per, that blog was actually kind of started as a personal, more of a personal blog than a book blog, but I still continue doing my reviews, like my good reviews, I just cut and paste on there. And then I still have my Instagram. Um, but I really, I just, neither of those were fitting my needs. And then I got into watching BookTube and I'm like, this is pretty good. I'm not sure I want to be on camera though. So for a long time, I was just sort of a, I should, I should add actually before BookTube, I tried BookTok. I don't like BookTok. And this is not, this is not, I'm not jumping into like BookTok's not real and people, no, it's just like, I don't, I personally don't like the style of book talk videos. I want a little bit more meat to meat. And that's just a personal preference of mine. That's not a critique on book talk. So, okay, got that out of the way. So I started watching book two because that was actually giving me what I felt I needed, but it was very one-sided because I was just watching videos. I didn't want to be on camera though. I just didn't feel comfortable doing it. And then this school year, my daughter joined the news team at her school and she's a producer for the little news videos. <clears throat> and so kind of working with her, she's my producer on this. She does, she's the behind the, the camera person. I thought, okay, well that might be a fun thing to do with her. So I thought, okay, I'm gonna give it a try. We'll just see how it goes. So that's kind of how I got started with it. I do, if you watch this channel, you know about once a month, I do a video with my son. I still have to tape that one for this month. <laughs> so I have both my kids involved in this. So that's how I got started on it. Question two. What are some fun and unique things you can bring to BookTube? I think every BookTuber brings something unique because every reader is different and um, every person is different. So everyone brings something unique. I am the only person who brings my children to this channel, even though I don't do it very much. I am the only person who brings my taste to BookTube because I'm the only person who has it, you know. I'm the only person who brings my sort of scattered inability to keep a point straight and I babble on like I do because I'm the only person who does it. Um, I think that I try not to be like anybody else. I'm just me. Unfortunately, this is how I am off camera too. So what you see is what you get. Um, so that's what I can bring. I can just be who I am. And just that's what anyone else can bring is I don't have any special knowledge. I just am who I am, which is a pretty avid reader. So next question. What are you most excited about with starting this new channel? Well, as I said, this channel has been around for five months. So um, yeah, I like working with my daughter. She's kind of over there right now, crashed out. <laughs> but she she's good behind the camera and working with my son too. Sometimes he's into it and sometimes he isn't. 
Um, I had plans to actually film this month's lit chat after this, but I don't think it's going to work with him today. Mother's intuition. Um, but I'm just mostly excited about meeting new people. I've, I've already met in five months. There's, you know, I follow a lot of channels. There's the, the channels that I follow. And then there are the channels that I watch every video too. And I have several of those. Um, and I'm really getting to know the other booktubers and I love that. Next question. Why do you love reading? Oh, there's so many reasons. Um, cause I can go anywhere I want. I can see the world through other people's eyes. It's a non-screen activity, especially if I'm not using my ear reader. It's keeps my imagination going. There's so many reasons. Um, why? I just love to read. I've always loved stories. Um, you know, I don't watch that much TV now because there aren't, there isn't that much TV that I think really lives up to my expectations. <laughs> but even with movies, just going into stories and learning about different worlds, different peoples, different lives. I love that. Next question. What book or series got you into reading? The Ramona Quimby series by Beverly Cleary. Um, I was a little bit of a reluctant reader growing up, um, but I grew up, I am in Oregon and I grew up in Oregon and Ramona, Beverly Cleary is from Oregon and the Ramona Quimby books are set in Oregon. So that sort of like local tie when I was a kid seemed really cool to me. And um, I, I got to the Ramona books just at the right time. And that's what I just kept wanting to read more. And the really cool thing about the Ramona books is I kind of aged out of them before Beverly Cleary quit writing them. So then when I started reading these books to my daughter, the last two books were new to me. So I got to have that new Ramona experience all over again. Okay, next one. What questions would you ask your favorite booktubers? I'm gonna tell you they'd all be technical questions because I'm really, really not very technical. <laughs> how, do you, how do you make this nice intro? How do you? How do you do this? How do you do that? Um, otherwise, as I said, my channel, this is me. I'm not trying to be anybody else, but there are things that I'd like to know how to do. And there are people who clearly know more about the technical side of booktube than I do. So that's what I would ask them. All sorts of technical questions. And I know a lot of them would say, why are you asking me? Because I don't know either, <laughs> but that's fine. That is perfectly fine. Next question. What questions would you ask didn't I just, oh wait, I just did that question. Next one, number seven. What challenges do you think starting a booktube channel will be the hardest to overcome? Um, five months in, and the hardest to overcome is I still am like a little nervous on camera. I know I talk too fast. I know that my words kind of leave me at times um, because I'm a little bit nervous. So I still haven't reached that comfort level that if you were just sitting across like the table talking to me, you would have. Um, so that's probably the hardest I would say is just getting comfortable in front of the camera. Uh, number eight, when did you start reading? Um, you know, I started reading at the age that most kids started reading. I know that my mother read to me a lot when I was a kid, but I don't have a lot of memories of that. Um, and I don't think I was really taught to read the way schools were when I was a kid, um, in, in where I went to school, school started at first grade. There was, Kindergarten was not part of public education, but I did go to like a preschool and kindergarten before first grade, but it was much more like socializing and date, you know, it's like a socializing play thing. There wasn't a lot of um, academic construction, which is fine. So I didn't really, I think, I think by the time I got to first grade, I knew my alphabet, but I hadn't started reading. So really in first grade is when I started putting the words together and started reading and I don't think I really got the Ramona bug until I was like in the fourth grade. And that's kind of when I started, okay, there's some things that I like to read. I'm gonna choose my own books and start reading those. Okay, number nine, where do you read? Wherever I want. <laughs> um, right now, I do have like a reading chair downstairs by our front window. However, we had to move it because of Christmas and then it became Girl Scout season, Girl Scout cookie season, and I've had to put cookies there. And so it's still not in the right place. So I haven't like used my reading chair in months because of that. Um, so I do a lot of reading up here in my bedroom. There is good light. Um, it's relatively quiet. It's comfortable. Um, I am a bathroom reader. Just going to tell you that there's always a book in the bathroom, but I also, you know, if I'm going someplace where I know I'm going to have to wait, um, 
you know, both my kids have braces, <laughs> so we go to the orthodontist, things like that. I always bring my e-reader with me and I'm fine reading in a waiting room. I can usually block stuff out. So I read wherever I can. Um, I do read at lunch. Also, um, if you, I'm reading uh, Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell. That's what I read during lunch when it's quiet. So like not when the kids chrome, but other times. So I will read just about anywhere. Okay. Question 10. Really? Are we on question 10 already? Wow. Okay. Question 10. What kind of books do you like to read? This is a great question. So I, I try not to be limited by any genre. I'll try most anything. So um, my favorite genres are mystery and historical fiction, probably. Um, I also like a lot of nonfiction. I like history, nonfiction, and memoir. I will say there are a couple of genres that are not speaking to me at the moment, so I've just kind of like taken a break from them. Generally, I mean, I might now and then make an exception. One is young adult, nothing against young adult, but my kids are getting to be the young adult age. And I think I need a break from that in my reading. So I've kind of stepped away from young adult. Um, however, I started getting into middle grade. <laughs> so I'm sure once my kids are kind of older out of the young adult age, I will get back into young adult. Um, the other one is romance. Um, there was a period, 2017, um, when I just needed to read things that I know, knew would turn out all right in the end. So I read almost exclusively romance that year. I may have overdosed on it. <laughs> uh, because then after that, it just it isn't speaking to me. I'm not someone who thinks that romance is a lesser genre or anything like that. I'm just saying at this current moment in time, it just isn't what's speaking to me. Um, I'm much more into reading books about figuring things out and setting things right, which is probably why I read mystery. There are a couple other genres that I'm always open to reading, but they are challenging for me. Science fiction is one of them. I am not really a science person. Um, fantasy, high fantasy, like new worlds building, you know, that whole Lord of the Rings-ish sort of, you know, create a whole new world. Fantasy can be a little hard for me. Um, magical realism, things like that, I, I'm better with, but, and again, it's not that I won't read them, it's just that they're a little more challenging to me. Okay, and what does your, final question, <laughs> what does your book collection look like? So, my physical book collection, I currently have three bookshelves. There needs to be more, I'm sorry, I just need more bookshelves. But, downstairs, I have a bookshelf like this one, identical to this one. Um, then that is my keeper shelf. It's almost full. Books that I love so much that I want to keep. And that not so much, it, it is that. Books I love so much that I want to keep. But also I feel that displaying these books in my house where people can see them is an illustration of who I am. That's what I think about people's bookshelves, especially their keeper shelves. So I really wanted to have a bookshelf down there where people could see the books. And I will tell you, there's a lot of Agatha Christie. There's a lot of Louise Penny. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so I have that downstairs. And then this bookshelf plus a part of another one, Overflow, is my physical TBR bookshelf. So these are books I haven't read yet. I need to get to them. Um, I had a goal for this year. I, I set a number on it, which was to, I can't exactly remember exactly what the number is, but the idea behind that number was that I wanted to be able to get all my unread physical books on this shelf. So we'll see if it happens. I also have um, a lot of eBooks. Um, I have come to the conclusion that I need to not buy ebooks. I mean, there's no purpose in buying ebooks except under very rare circumstances. Um, I have hundreds of ebooks, and I really probably only need to own like five or six um, because I can get them from the library. I would much rather get an ebook from a library because I could just, I don't even have to go to the library to get it, than a physical book, because I'm trying to cut down my physical books and reading a physical book from the library means I'm not reading one out of here. So um, I'm trying to, I have the eBooks. I have two e-readers, because people ask this. I have a Kindle and I have a Kobo. I prefer my Kobo, but I had the Kindle first and it has a lot of stuff on it. So I'm not actively adding books to my Kindle, but um, I am reading what's there. And then Kobo is sort of my new one. Um, I just like the Kobo reader better. It also works better with my life with Libby and Overdrive. So because I'm checking books out of the library, eBooks out of the library, that's a better device for it. So it also, it looks better. I've said this before. I have some eye issues um, for various reasons. I go through times when it's a little hard for me to read some things and I tend to have trouble with small print 
or with prints where either the print is light enough or the page is yellowed, um, where there isn't enough contrast between the print and the page, I have a lot of trouble reading those. So I don't have that problem on eBooks. And when I have times when my eye issues seem especially bad, sometimes I can only read eBooks. So that is what my book collection looks like. And this is the booktube newbie tag. Um, I will probably, I'm scheduling this to come up while I am not in town. So when like the week after this goes up, I will probably pin it as sort of like my intro video because the intro video I did five months ago is probably crap. That's not to say that this one is not crap, but it's probably just not as much crap as the first one. So there you go. Uh, if you like this video, thank you. Please leave a comment, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Um, and if this is the, your first introduction to me, I hope that you have a better idea of who I am. So thank you very much. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you. Thank you.